Russell Brand, who are you to edit a political magazine? Well, I just suppose like a person who's been politely asked by an attractive woman. I don't know what the typical criteria is. I don't know many people that edit political magazines. Boris, he used to do one, didn't he? So I'm a, ki a person with crazy hair, quite a good sense of humour, don't know much about politics, I'm ideal. But is it true you don't even vote? Yeah, no, I don't vote. Well, how do you have any authority to talk about politics then? Well, I don't uh, get my authority from this pre-existing paradigm which is quite narrow and only serves a few people. I look elsewhere for alternatives that might be of service to humanity. Alternate means, alternate political systems. Uh, they being? Well, I've not invented it yet, Jeremy. I had to do a magazine last week. I've had a lot on my plate. But I say, but here's the thing it shouldn't do. Shouldn't destroy the planet. Shouldn't create massive economic disparity. Shouldn't ignore the needs of the people. The burden of proof is on the people with the power, not people like doing a magazine. How do you imagine the people get power? Well, I imagine there are sort of hierarchical systems that have been preserved for, through they generations. They get power by being voted in. Well, you That's say how that, Jeremy. But you like can't even be asked to vote. It's quite a narrow, uh, quite a narrow prescriptive parameter that changes within the... Uh, the in a democracy, that's how it works. Well, I don't think it's working very well, Jeremy, given that the planet is being destroyed, given that there is economic disparity of a huge degree. What are you saying? There's no alternative. There's no alternative. No, I'm Just not saying system. that. I'm saying if you Brilliant. can't be asked to vote, why should we be asked to listen to your political point of view? You don't have to listen to my political point of view. Of you, but it's not uh, that I'm not voting out of apathy, I'm not voting out of absolute indifference and weariness and exhaustion from the lies, treachery, deceit of the political class that has been going on for generations now and which has now reached fever pitch where we have a disenfranchised, disillusioned, despondent underclass that are not being represented by that political system. So voting for it is tacit complicity with that system and that's not something I'm offering up. Well, why don't you change it then? I'm trying to. Well, why don't you start by voting? <laughs> I don't think it works. People have voted already, and that's what's created the current well, paradigm. When did you last vote? Never. You've never, ever voted? No. Do you think that's really bad? So you struck an attitude, what, before the age of 18? Well, I was busy being a drug addict at that point because I come from the kind of social conditions that are exacerbated by an indifferent system that really just administrates for large corporations and ignores the population that well, it was voted in the, to serve. You're blaming the political class of the fact that you had a drug problem? No, no, no. I'm saying I was part of a social and economic class that is underserved by the current political system and drug addiction is one of the problems it creates when you have huge underserved impoverished populations people get drug problems and also don't feel like, uh, like they want to engage with the current political system because they see that it doesn't work for them they see that it makes no difference they see that they're not served well, i say it that doesn't the apathy, work for them if they don't bother to vote jeremy my darling i'm not saying that the, the apathy doesn't come from us the people the apathy comes from the politicians they are apathetic to our needs they're only interested in servicing the needs of corporations look at what ain't the tories going to court and to taking the eu to court because they're trying to curtail uh, bank bonuses. Is that what's happening at the moment in our country? It is, isn't it? Yeah, there is so what am I going to tune in for that? You don't believe in democracy. No, you want a revolution, don't you? The planet is being destroyed. We are creating an underclass. We are exploiting poor people all over the world. And the genuine, legitimate problems of the people are not being addressed by our political class. All of those things may be true. They are true. But you took... I wouldn't argue with you about many of them. Well, how come I feel so cross with you? It can't just be because of that beard. It's gorgeous. It's possibly because... And if the Daily Mail don't want it, I do. I'm against them. Grow it longer. You are Tangle a... it into your armpit hair. You are a very trivial man. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? I am trivial. Yes. A minute ago, you were having a go at me because I want a, a, a revolution. Now no, I'm trivial. I'm, asking, no, I'm but, bouncing but about I'm not having a go at you because you want a revolution. Many Good. people want a revolution, but I'm asking you what it will be like. Well, I think what it won't be like is a huge disparity between rich and poor, where 300 Americans have the same amount of wealth as the 85 bill million poorest Americans, where there is a, an exploited and underserved underclass that are being continually ignored, where, where welfare is slashed while Cameron and Osborne go to court to defend the rights of bankers to continue receiving to their bonuses. That's, That's all what's, I'm saying. What's the scheme? The That's all I'm asking. What's the scheme? You talk vaguely about revolution. What is it? I think a socialist egalitarian system based on the massive redistribution of wealth, heavy taxation of corporations and massive responsibility for uh, energy companies and any company that's in sport exploiting the environment, I think they should be, ta I think the very concept of profit should be hugely reduced. Okay. David Cameron says profit isn't a dirty word, I say profit is a filthy word because wherever there is profit there is also deficit and there, this system currently doesn't address these ideas and so why would anyone vote for it? Why would anyone be interested in Who it? Who would levy these taxes? I think we do need to, like, there needs to be a centralised administrative system, but built on... 
I, I, yes, there I, needs I, to be a government. Well, we might maybe call it something else. Call them like the admin bods, right. so they don't get. A, and how would they themselves. be chosen? Jeremy, don't ask me to sit here in an interview with you in a bloody hotel room and devise a global utopian system. I'm merely pointing out that the You're current... You're calling for revolution. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I'm calling for change. I'm calling for genuine alternatives. But there are many people who would agree with you. That Good. The current system is not engaging with all sorts of problems, yes. And they feel apathetic, mm. really apathetic. Yes. But if they were to take you seriously... And not to vote. Yeah, they shouldn't vote. Oh, they should. That's one thing they should do. Don't bother voting. Because then when it reaches, there's a point. So these little valves, these sort of like little cosy little valves of recycling and Prius and like, you know, turn up somewhere. It stops us reaching the pit point where we think, oh, this is enough now. Stop voting. Stop pretending. Wake up. Be in reality now. Time to be in reality now. Why vote? We know it's not going to make any difference. We know that already. So, you know, it I, I have more impact difference. at West Ham United, cheering them on. And they lost the city unnecessarily. Sadly. OK, well, now you're being facetious. Well, well, facetiousness has as much value as seriousness. I think you're making the mistake of, a, of mistaking seriousness. We're not going to solve world problems by facetiousness. That's We're not going to solve them with the current system. At least facetiousness is funny. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah, sometimes, Jeremy. So listen, so let's approach this optimistically. You've spent your whole career berating and haranguing politicians, and then when, like me, a comedian goes, yeah, they're all worthless, what's the point in engaging with any of them? You sort of have a go at me because I'm not poor anymore. Well, no, I'm, I'm not having a go at you about that. I'm just asking you why we should take you seriously when you're so unspecific. You don't have what... to take... Well, I, I, firstly, I don't mind if you take me seriously. I'm here just to draw attention to a few ideas. I just want to have a little bit of a laugh. I'm saying there are people with alternative ideas that are far better qualified than I am and far better qualified, more importantly, than the people that are currently doing that job because they're not attempting to solve these problems. They're not. They're attempting to placate the population. The measures that are currently being taken around climate change are indifferent, will not solve the, will you not don't solve think the problem. It's, it's possible as human beings they're simply overwhelmed by the scale of the problem. Not really. Well, possibly it might be that. I mean, but that's sort of just semantics, really. Whether they're overwhelmed by it or tacitly maintaining it because of habitual life. I mean, like, mate, I, I, well, this is what I noticed when I was in the Houses of Parliament. It's decorated exactly the same as Eton. It's decorated exactly the same as Oxford. So a certain type of people goes in there and thinks, oh, this makes me nervous. And another type of people go in there and go, this is how it should be. And I think that's got to change now. We can no longer have erroneous, duplicitous systems held in place unless it's for the serve, only systems that serve the planet and serve the population of the planet can be allowed to survive. Not ones that serve elites, be they a political or corporate elites. And this is what's currently happening. You don't really believe that. I completely believe it. Don't look at me all Ed, weary, like well, you're at a fireside with Ed, a pipe in your I beard. I mean, Ed Miliband <laughs> was an elite. Well, he went to the same pri um, primary school as Boris, though, didn't he? He did, but he then went to a comprehensive school in North London. Well, that's very good. That's all well and good. And, but what I'm saying is that within the existing paradigm, the change is not dramatic enough, not radical enough. So you can well understand public disturbances and public dissatisfaction when there are not genuine changes and genuine alternatives being offered. I say when there is a genuine alternative, a genuine option, then vote for that. But until then, <laughs> don't bother. Why pretend? Why be complicit in this ridiculous illusion? Because by the time somebody comes along, you might think it worth voting for. It may be too late. I don't think so, because the time is now. These movements are already occurring. It's happening everywhere. We're in a time where communication is instantaneous, and there are communities all over the world. The Occupy movement made a difference, in, even if only in that it introduced to the popular public lexicon the idea of the 1% versus the 99%. People, for the first time in a generation, are aware of massive corporate and economic exploitation. These things are not nonsense. And these subjects are not being addressed. They're, no one's doing anything about tax havens. No one's doing anything about their political affili affiliations and financial affiliations of the Conservative Party. So until people start addressing things that are actually real, mm. why wouldn't I be facetious? Why would I take it seriously? Why would I encourage a constituency of young people that are absolutely indifferent to vote? Why would we? Aren't you bored? Aren't you more bored than anyone? And you've been talking to them year after year, listening to their lies, their nonsense. Then it's this one gets in, then it's that one get in. But the problem continues. Why are we going to continue to contribute to this facade? I'm surprised you can be facetious when you're that angry about it. Yeah, I am angry. I am angry. Because for me, it's real. Because for me, it's not just some peripheral thing that I turn up once in a while to a church fate for. For me, this is what I come from. This is what I care about. Do you see any hope? Remember that? Yeah, totally. There's going to be a revolution. It's totally going to happen. I, don't, not, not only, I, I ain't got a flicker of doubt. This is the end. 
This is time to wake up. I remember I see you in that program where you look at your ancestors and you saw that while your grandmother had to brass herself or got fucked over by the aristocrats who ran her gaff, you cried because you knew that it was unfair and unjust. And that was, what was that a century ago? That's happening to people now. I just come from a woman who's being treated like that. I've just been talking to a woman today who's being treated like that. So it, if we can engage that feeling, instead of some moment of lacrimose sentimentality trotted out on the TV for people to pour over emotional porn, if we can engage that feeling and change things, why wouldn't we? Why is that naive? Why is that not my right because I'm an actor? I mean, I, I've taken the right. I don't need the right from you. I don't need the right from anybody. I'm taking it.